Phil, it's pretty straightforward now, isn't it? You've got to win them both. <laughs> um, I think that's the brutal, harsh reality of life in any, in any football club, to be, to be honest. Um, if you look at league tables at the end of the season, which we all do, that's what we love the game for. That's what we're drawn to, league, league tables. Where are they? Are they there for a reason? Have there been points deduction? Is it, is it um, something that's happened during the course of the season that's beyond their control? There's all excuses to be made, but we're in it with a chance, you know, whereas 16 games ago, everybody wrote us off, you know, we were relegated out of sight. I wouldn't have took the job if we were already relegated. Um, and I don't think the, the job would have been available. It would have, it would have just been a case of, of Russ and Jimmy battle on to the end of the season, and then maybe we'll change it. You know, when the offer came along, um, the job, the challenge was to stay in the National League and we've still got that opportunity with, with 16 games under our belt. We know what that group's like now. We know exactly um, what's coming in terms of the opposition. Um, there's a lot of times we've played teams that are far better football teams than what we are, uh, but we battle against them and we've won that battle individually and collectively and we've gone on to win a game. So that's the mentality of, of Saturday. Nothing's changed really. Um, people are talking about Eastleigh and where they'll be in their headspace. I'm not bothered. I ain't bothered about what they're doing. I just need to know what the system is, what the formation is, what personnel are involved in that, what the manager's thinking, etc., etc. Of which we, in the main, I think we've got it right. You know, the, the analysis guys have been absolutely outstanding, to tell you the truth. And the, the scouts that we've had watch opposition have got it right in the majority of times. So we think we know what's coming. Uh, will they be on the beach? I'm not bothered about them. I'm bothered about our mentality. Um, and I don't want to call it home and away mentality, I just want to call it two games. These are two games against two National League teams, opposition, uh, what we know the stakes are all about, winning both of them games, getting six points and then having a look at the league table, but don't look at it before then. But the first job is Saturday. Um, and again, I go back to the football club, what a great job Kidder Minster Harriers staff have done. Um, you know, the, the chairman, the, the director of football, Matty, you know, Helen, you name it, it, it just extends beyond recognition at times when I'm, when I'm talking about giving thanks to people who filled the stadium for my benefit, filled the stadium for the players' benefit, um, quid for a kid, all of, all of the initiatives that have been put in place and to get over three, and, three, three and a half thousand at every game has just been fantastic, you know. But we can't let these people down. Um, we can't let ourselves down, that's the main one. We can't let our families down. We can't let the teammates down because if you don't take on the information that I'm going to give them in the next couple of days, then you're not in my change room. You need to be in the opposition's change room because at the end of the day, you're not for me. Uh, there'll be stringent rules and regulations for the next two games. There'll be a way of playing. There'll be a style of football. There'll be a starting position, and a middle position and an end position. And hopefully all of them Pieces of the jigsaw will come together and paint a nice picture after Saturday's game. I sense the real frustration having heard your interview after the Halifax game was that they played so well at Chesterfield. I know there's no <coughs> way in our own mentality, I get that. But you almost sort of questioned the attitude of it after the Halifax game. I did. I did and I didn't. Um, I know where you're, where you're going with it and I think it's a, it's a great question because um, I looked at myself, I always do first and foremost, and the change that I made on the 60, 65th minute, did it impact on us or did it impact on the opposition? Well, you know, in hindsight, when you look at the result, it impacted on us, you know, and it didn't do us any favours taking Sammy off, so I hold me, myself responsible for that and I always will. Um, but when the, when the opposition scored a goal, um, I don't want to say reverted to type because I've seen so many good pictures from this group of players, you know, going two goals behind in the first game. I didn't panic, I didn't look at them as if they, you know, didn't want me at the football club, uh, looked as if uh, they didn't want Neil McDonald at the football club. They just carried on the way we, we practiced and we put that practice into, into purpose and it, it actually got us the result. So we dispelled a lot of theories and then all of a sudden, 16 games later, then theories come back? Maybe not. I think Halifax had a purpose and they showed that purpose when they got their noses in front. Uh, they've got the best defensive record in the, in the National League, uh, clean sheets, etc, etc, goals conceded. So there's something to probably look at from that game and say the first 60 minutes you would say that we had a real strong grip on the game, we had a foothold in the game and especially the first 15-20 minutes of the second half. To lose the game and to empty in the manner in which we did was the criticism I had of the group. 
and they know what my philosophy is. We will make mistakes 100%, I will make mistakes 100%, but you just keep on pressing that reset button. And we didn't, and unfortunately we lost the game 2-0 and it, it petered out to a nothing game. And You know when I see three, three and a half thousand fans turn up, and then when we're walking around at the end, there's probably a tenth left. That's a sign that we haven't performed, and that was the disappointment I had. When we can fill a stadium or get near as damage to fill a stadium in your bottom of the National League, they're there for a reason, they're passionate about the football club, they want to stay in this division probably as much as what anybody does because they want to come and see good football next, e next season at a higher level. So with all that in mind, I think we let them down and um, I'm going to promise them that we won't let them down on Saturday. You mentioned that you're going to have strict plans in place, strict structures in place. Does the fact that realistically you need to win both games impact in any way on your team selection? Um, again, good question. I don't know how long you've been in the game, Trevor, but you're asking the right questions for sure. You know, um, does it mean we need to score goals? Absolutely. Can we score goals? Absolutely. Have we got players in the in the squad that haven't been on the field to play that can create and score goals? Absolutely. So we will we will be positive about our performance. Um, but I also like to keep that clean sheet mentality that we had probably four or five games ago. Um, it's just slipped a wee bit, but you know there'll be a change of personnel. Um, that hopefully will rectify that, but we'll, we'll see. You know, the team selection and the formation um, might surprise one or two, but at the end of the day, when you're in last chance saloon, which we're not, we're in second last chance saloon, um, we've got to make sure we get to last chance saloon. And if we do, if we take it to the Barnet game, I'll be absolutely delighted, I tell you. I was going to say, final point, really, that weeks ago I was looking at it and thought, if you can get to Barnet on the last day with something still to play for, that would probably do at that point. Even better if it was in our hands, 100%. Um, but again, go back to the two games, you know, six points from two games, there's six points available. You take us back 25 games, the next two games, there's six points available. Nobody's ever going to throw them points away, and we're certainly not um, building a game plan for Saturday with regards to next Saturday. We're thinking about Saturday only, and that's all we'll think about. And hopefully, after the game, um, we can go around the pitch and applaud the fans with great pride because we've given them all. Uh, and we get the three points that we deserve more than anything and we take it to that last game. Good luck, have a good one. Thank you. Is that one of the message one of the messages from you as well in terms of literally leaving everything out there? Because obviously we've all got everything crossed and we're all working towards getting <coughs> going on, but if that isn't what we end up with, you don't want it to be for a lack of anything like effort or attitude, do you? Well, Matty, if you've got a like I've done the half marathon, which we've all talked about for the last four or five, six weeks. Preparation for that is just about running, and um, can any can any, anybody do the half marathon? Not really. But if you can run, you've got to be able to run with a purpose and run, run with a mentality. My purpose was prostate cancer. My mentality is to finish as quickly as I possibly could, and to say I was sprinting uh, because I thought I was going to break the, the two-hour mark. I was sprinting the last mile. And it's what the mind is capable of, and what the body can do, if the mind is strong, then. You're capable of achieving anything, and that's the mentality we need to have on Saturday. Uh, and as you say, have a look at the teleprinter, which I always call it. Have a look at the teleprinter and take it to the last game. It'll be great if we do. It'll be fantastic if we do. Um, I'll be very, very disappointed if we don't take it to the last game. But if we survive, you'll see how happy a man I'll be. And that's a reflection of the job that everyone's done, as you say, since, since you've been here, that we are written with a chance of being disappointed if that's the case. I think the um, the challenge ahead is is quite obvious, you know, and, and um, I think the group of players, if they don't know me now, they never will do because I've, uh, they've seen the whites of my eyes, they've seen the whites of my teeth, they've seen anger, they've seen happiness, they've seen you know total extremes in terms of emotion. But that's what football does to you, and I, unfortunately, that's what Kitty Harris has done to me in a short space of time. If it's done to me in a short space of time, hopefully it's done to them in a long period because they've been here longer than me. And if they show that on Saturday with the pride in their performance, then uh, I'll be delighted. And does it feel the same for you as well, whether it's nerves or energy or excitement? You know, obviously aware of your track record and having kept a team in the Premier League at the end of the season, it, is, is it the same kind of mix of emotions for you? It's the same kind of vibe, eh? you get a tingle uh, in your spine, your, your stomach, whichever the case may be, and if I didn't get that now, I would have retired a long time ago. Um, it doesn't matter what football club, it doesn't matter what colours you wear, um, it doesn't matter which, which badge you're playing for, which, which owner that you're playing for, it doesn't matter. Um, if you see your passion being valued at that football club, and then you see your management acumen, if you like, valued at that football club, which I've seen, there's no doubt about it, 
Um, then I'm passionate about the club, I'm passionate about winning games of football and there's only one benefit from that and that's Kiddy Arias. Thanks very much. Could you just ask how the marathon went the half marathon? Yeah, 2 hours 12. I did 2 hours 12 and believe it or not, it's the strangest thing. Um, I come around the bend and you can see the, the clock uh, and I'm thinking it's saying 1.55 but it isn't it's saying 11.55, it was actually the time it was 5 to 12. And I'm thinking if I break if I break two hours here, I'm gonna get a lot more money. <laughs> so I started sprinting, I started really going for it, and I got in 11.56, but it was two hours twelve. So I was delighted with it, absolutely delighted, and uh, and all the contributors have been absolutely outstanding. Now, I'm, not, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna say none more because figures are always attached to that, but you know, one Kidman Saharias fan put eleven hundred pounds in. And that £1,100 took me over my first target. I've now since gone past that by £800 and hopefully a little bit more still to come in. Talk about dribs and drabs. It's still open. You know, the Just Giving page is still open and hopefully there's still more money to come in for prostate cancer.